Hey everybody out there, it's Terry Wellbanks from Event Banks MMA and Warrior Fight Store Whippy, located at 319 Brock Street South, Unit 2, Whippy, Ontario, Canada. Today I just want to do a quick video on Vanderlei Silva and then talk about something really fast. Um, so I'm going to jump right into it. Vanderlei Silva and Vitor Belfort, the fight has been called off essentially because Vitor injured himself. Um, and, and, you know, that sucks because everybody really wanted to see that fight. I know I sure did. And there's a lot of people out there that are pulling for certain middleweights. Alan Belcher is very deserving uh, to, to fight Vanderlei. I think that would be a great, a great fight for sure. The Muay Thai and the shoot box would be insane. Michael Bisping, although he's scheduled to fight Tim Boach, I still think that that would be a great fight to have again. Um, uh, Tim Boach, I, I, I think, would be a great replacement as well. Um, you know, Chris Weidman, I know he's fighting Munoz. There, there's obviously got to be a lot of moving and shaking, but I also think that something that that we're missing is is that there are 205 pounders and Vanderlei's competed at that level um, that that could drop down and have a catchweight fight with him and and you could fight at 195 and I think it would be a fantastic fight and I think there's a lot more options out there there's Stefan Bonner um, who who I don't believe has a fight scheduled you've got um, you've got Phil Davis you've got Alexander Gustafson um, as well there's Rashad Evans now I don't know if Rashad could cut to 195 but if he could let's think about how good that fight would be um, I, I, there's, there's probably a lot of red tape and all that stuff to go through with it, but I think Rashad Evans would be a great fight. Alexander Gustafson would be a great fight, and I also think Phil Davis would be phenomenal. Now, I know Phil uh, headlined the UFC on Fox card. He didn't live up to his skill level, in my opinion. I think he's, a, I think he's much better than what he showed that night, and I think the next time he gets in the cage is going to be crazy. So, Phil Davis, um, Stefan Bonner would be a cool fight. There, there's lots of guys out there. So, hopefully Vanderlei gets a fight and, and gets his due. Uh, I, I can't wait to see him fight again especially coming off that last win uh it, it looked like vintage um Vanderlei so I, I'm super excited to see him fight and I hope they find him a really great and exciting replacement now that being said I'm also I also want to jump on to uh to, to another topic have you ever been driving down the street and you see a 19 to 30 year old man that's driving a 1998 Honda Civic uh the car's worth $500 but he spends $3,000 on mufflers and stereo systems just so he can make his car sound super loud and super cool well, that's kind of the situation that I feel the MMA world is, is moving in with a lot of fans. And the reason why I touch on this, and again, I don't want to be coming across as preachy. I apologize if that's how you feel. I'm not trying to do that. I'm just trying to point out some things that I see. 90% um, of MMA fans out, right, out there right now on Facebook, on Twitter, on the, on the forums, they're all, they all seem to be extremely loud. And, and what I mean by loud is, is that every other word is a curse word. They're calling somebody out. Um, they're making fun of people for their vlogs. Listen, if somebody does a vlog, like you can make fun of me, it, it doesn't matter to me, but if somebody takes time to do a vlog and you go on their vlog, on their thread on YouTube and you just bash them, it's not really constructive. Um, if you think that somebody needs help or if somebody or if somebody could be doing something better, maybe you should just make a suggestion to them as opposed to, as opposed to bash them on their thread just trying to make them look bad but make yourself feel better. Um, and, and the worst part about it is in, the, in most cases, the things that you call people out for, they aren't even true and, and there's no validity to them at all. It's just you kind of trying to make yourself feel better and more knowledgeable in the sport when in all actuality, the person that you're probably calling out knows a little bit more than you. And in, in total, and the whole grand scheme of this is, is that new MMA fans, they come in every single month. When there's a new pay-per-view, UFC, Strike Force, whomever, there is new fans that come into the sport wanting to learn the sport. And it's very, very tough for fans to learn the sport when they go on Twitter and they start following people and all they see is, you know, F this and F that and you're a clown shoe and just just calling people names and, and, and acting malicious for no reason. Um, there's a lot of fans that are calling out fighters. Like, you have to be insane to call out a professional fighter. You can be a fan and I understand that you don't want to back down from anybody. But calling a, a professional MMA fighter out to a fight, just see what kind of reaction you get and troll them, that's fine. Uh, you know, I, 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 I don't understand it. Um, there, you can be a troll and be funny. There's guys out there like the Black Fedor, Kimura Kev, um, MMA Amy, Ashley T. Sunshine. These people are, are, I don't want to call them trolls because they're all great people, but, but in a sense, they're trolls. But they're trolls in a good way. They have fun with people. They have fun with situations. They're not malicious to the point to where somebody is actually going to get hurt out of this. And we always talk about anti-bullying and we talk about being a better person. And, and there's a big push for anti-bullying right now. When you bully somebody on Twitter, regardless of if they're a grown adult or not, I'm sure that they feel the effects of that and you make them not want to be involved in the MMA community. And ultimately, this goes for regular day life too. There's no reason for somebody sitting behind a keyboard to call somebody else out. And, and I understand that you're not going to see this person face to face, so you can't do it face to face. 
but ultimately you don't call people out over the internet it doesn't make you look cool it makes you look like you're driving around in your 1998 honda civic or honda prelude or something honda that's old and you're cruising around the streets just trying to get attention by being loud and obnoxious it doesn't make you look good it's not a good look for you it's not a good look for the sport it's not a good look on a whole and you can be classy you can you, you can be um, smart you can be funny you can be witty you can have a great personality and still get tons of people following you on Twitter you don't need to cause drama to get followers you don't need to give away stuff to get followers either that drives me crazy if you're giving away stuff people don't actually want to follow you they want to follow you because you're giving away free stuff they, they have no interest in what you're doing other than the fact you're giving them something so again I don't think that it makes the sport look good um, the, the, the bullying on Twitter is crazy. The bullying on YouTube that I see on some of these people's videos who are just trying to get their point of view out there is insane. Making fun of people, it, it's, it's so pointless and, and, it, and, it, and it doesn't help anybody. It doesn't help any situation. So I hope that this helped. Again, I'm sorry if I come across as preachy. That is not what I want to do. I hope you guys have a great rest of the week. Um, and thank you so much for watching this Sunday, June 3rd. 319 Brock Street South Unit 2. I've got Mark Hominick, Sam Stout, Chris Ordecki here with Show Your Strength. They're going to be coming in. They're going to be doing a signing. It's $10. All the $10 goes towards charity for underprivileged children. Please come in and check us out. It's from 12 to 2 p.m. 319 Brock Street South Unit 2, Whippy, Ontario, Canada. Hit me up on Twitter if you have any questions at eventbanks underscore WFSW. And it's always on. I'm always on Twitter. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please share this video and subscribe. Have a great day, guys.